Recently, I was trying to graph a linear programming problem in Excel. Linear programming involves graphing a series of straight lines, so I figured, how hard could it be? It turns out to be extremely difficult to do well. However, in experimenting with it, I figured out an amazing Excel hack that makes it simple. The hack even handled one of the situations that an Excel line graph itself could not handle. While this hack is designed specifically for graphing straight lines for linear programming, I think you will find it makes a powerful tool to add to your Excel grafting toolbox. Linear programming is designed to maximize or minimize an objective function based on a series of constraints. These constraints are expressed as lines, thus the linear part of the name linear programming. For the sample problem, we are trying to decide how many x's and y's to produce and we have four constraints. One, 0.67 times x plus 0.50 times y must be less than or equal to 90. 2. 0.33 times x plus 0.50 times y must be less than or equal to 60. 3. 1 x must be less than or equal to 120. 4. And 1 y must be less than or equal to 110. For the purposes of this demonstration, it is not important what these constraints represent. All you need to know is that we wish to graph them. To do that, we first replace the less than or equal signs with equal signs so the equations represent lines and not areas. Here, I've entered the numbers into separate cells so I can perform calculations on them. The bold numbers 0 to 180 represent the x values. I then wrote equations to calculate the y values, and those are shown below the x values. I'll show you the equation I used, although it's not important to this hack. The equation uses mixed cell references, so I could write it once and copy it to all the cells. It basically algebraically solves for y given the x value. So, for this cell, x equals 0. 90 minus 0 times x equals 90. And 90 divided by 0 0.50 equals 180. All the other values are calculated the same way. Production cannot be negative, so I stopped copying the values once they went negative. Also, note that the third row of data is empty. That has no y value because it is just a vertical line at 120. Once I had the data, I constructed the line chart you see on the screen. It is correct, as far as it goes, but it has two major limitations. One, as already mentioned, it cannot show the vertical line at 120. Two, it does not scale well. When I change the 90 to 120, the graph adjusts the best it can, but the yellow line no longer goes all the way out to the x-axis as it should. The only way to correct this is to edit the data used in the graph. We can do better. We can correct both of these issues and create a graph that can handle any situation and scale automatically. A line is defined by any two points on that line. Since we want these lines to go from the x-axis to the y-axis, we will define those two points for each of the four lines. The first two equations are regular lines with both an x and a y-intercept. They are the easiest to deal with, so we will handle them first. Where they cross the x-axis, they both have a y-value of zero. When y is zero for the first equation, x equals 90 divided by 60, or d4 divided by a4. I can just copy that formula down for the second equation. When they cross the y-axis, they both have an x-value of zero. When x is 0 for the first equation, y equals 90 divided by 30, or d4 divided by b4. I can just copy that formula down for the second equation. Now to deal with the two lines that only have an x or a y value. We will deal with 90 times x equals 120 first. When there is no y value, the resulting line is a vertical line. In this case, it is a vertical line at 120 divided by 90 equals 1.3333. This translates into d6 divided by a6. We want the line to start at the x-axis and y equals 0 there, so we will just enter a 0 for the y value. We want the line to go straight up, but stay at the same x value. So, we will enter the same equation for x for the second point. Now, how high should the line go? Technically, it goes to a positive infinity, but that would affect the scaling of the chart. What we need is for it to go just as high as the other equations. We can find that value using a maximum function. Now we have our vertical line.
it's now time to handle the last line. That is a horizontal line. When x equals 0, y equals 110 divided by 60. This is the point it crosses the y-axis, so x equals 0. Now how far should the line go to the right? As before, it technically goes to infinity, but we want to keep the scale reasonable. What we need is for it to go just as far as the other equations. We can find that value using a maximum function. We now have two points defined for each line. How we actually turn these into lines will surprise you. We are going to graph them, but without using a line graph. This is the hack that is so extremely useful. We need to insert the graph without Excel trying to pick the data for us. So I'll move to a blank part of the worksheet without data. Rather than inserting a line chart, we are going to insert a scatter chart. These are also known as XY charts. And make sure to pick the one that shows lines. We will be inserting the lines one at a time. I start by right clicking on the chart and selecting data. To enter the first line I click on add. If I were constructing an actual linear programming problem, these equations would represent constraints and I would give them meaningful series names. They don't mean anything here so I'll skip that part. I begin by clicking on the x values. I then click on the first x value in the chart. Holding down the control key, I click on the second x value and then press enter. I repeat the process for the two y values for the same equation. You can see the line added automatically and both the x and y axes scale automatically. I click on OK to return to the main dialog box. I can add the three remaining equations the same way. I can now click on OK to complete the graph. Now if I change the 90 to 120, everything scales automatically. All the lines still go from the Y axis to the X axis. No matter what I change, it works perfectly. This hack only works when all the lines stay in a single quadrant of the graph. Since almost all line graphs stay in the top right quadrant, this hack works with all of those graphs. Additionally, I started and ended all the lines at the X and Y axes. However, I only did that because this is how linear programming problems are defined. You can actually define the start and ending points in any way that makes sense for the lines you are working with, and this hack will work just fine. Enjoy!